It's the weekend and time for your Bobby Today Evening News Update for Friday, March 11. The Ministry of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs has come to the aid of 19-year-old Amaris Giddens and her 22-year-old boyfriend Enrique Marshall, who has been living in Hero Square. Speaking on the sidelines of a tour of the Soroptimist Village for Seniors in Eden Lodge today, Minister Kurt Humphrey said his ministry has met with the couple and other support agencies in a bid to find a long-term solution. Ministry has already stepped in. Um, we've already worked with, again, with Safri to be able to make sure last night that they were accommodated. We've already had them assigned um, to be evaluated and have assigned them residents. So currently, they're, by the end of the day, they will be in a accommodations that are safe, where the two of them could be together. And they're going to be exposed to a lot of training and assessments to see if they could actually live on their own to be able to, to have independent living. Um, the ministry is working to make sure that that happens, whether it's through welfare, uh, the NDU, and so on. So we're transitioning now. Um, the NDU will also be making sure that the persons, both of them, go for their medical appointments and get their checkups and so on. So all that is happening now, the evaluations. We also have to look and see if they need um, some kind of physiotherapist to be able to help them. The story that I saw honestly was, was heart-wrenching. Government will be commissioning a study to update its figures on the number of Barbadians who are living below the poverty line. According to People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Minister Kurt Humphrey, this will enable government to better respond to the needs of Barbadians. I think it's important to understand in real terms how many people are poor by you know, a standard for poverty, um, how many people are indigent, how many people are vulnerable. Um, that is why it's going to be important that we soon do another poverty assessment to get a real, in scientific terms, so that I'm not just giving you numbers as to what the poverty lane is and who falls below that poverty lane and who falls below the indigent lane and the vulnerability lane. But to, to answer your question directly, most of our agencies are oversubscribed. Um, the pressures on the welfare system, you know, we already said the welfare receives up to 13,000 calls a month. And one of the things that I felt we needed to do was to have a, an emergency helpline at, at welfare so that when persons can't physically pick up, people can leave a message. And very soon we're going to be announcing what that number is. There's a growing demand for more housing solutions for the elderly. Speaking during a tour of Soroptimist Village for seniors in Eden Lodge today, the president of Soroptimist International Barbados, Ramona Smart, revealed that their organization has seen an increase in interest from all the persons who are in need of accommodation. However, Smart says their facilities are unable to meet the demand. Normally would have, um, in terms of the daily activity, we would normally have between 45 and 50 persons. With COVID, we had to reduce, obviously, because of the protocols. So that has been severely reduced to between 20 and 25 persons. In terms of the housing, we have a long list of persons waiting to get into here um, to live but we can only accommodate up to 22. And once we get repairs done on those two units, it will be only up to 24. So there's an urgent need to have additional housing for seniors. In other news this Friday, on the 37th anniversary of the death of former Prime Minister Tom Adams, there's a call to make him a national hero. Speaking at a reef ceremony at the St. Michael's Cathedral today, Barbados Labour Party stalwart and current Member of Parliament for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, said that the former Prime Minister should be accorded the island's top title. And I pray that as the time goes by, yes, we are identifying national heroes. We, the folk of St. Thomas, recommend that none other than Tom Adams become one of the national heroes of this country because he has transformed the landscape. And he has done so much, as I speak, on the outskirts of the Central Bank, now the Tom Adams Financial Center. That is just one of the wonderful things that he would have done with the advancement or the development of this country. And so today we say farewell to you again, Tom. Thank you for all that you have done for the people of Barbados. And on behalf of the Barbados Labour Party and the, the management there, as well as all the Labour Party family and Barbadians as a whole, we want to say how fond we are and how loving we are towards the things you have done. And we look forward to lending our support to any leader in Barbados who continues to look towards the development of this country. 
Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw says it will take a collaborative effort to rid the island schools of bullying. Speaking at the launch of a bullying prevention program at the St. George Secondary School today, Dr. Archer Bradshaw said that while it's the responsibility of teachers and non-teaching staff to follow up and intervene in any known cases at schools, it's also important that parents play an active role to tackle the vexing problem. Parents and community leaders, your involvement must not stop at the door of your household or in your neighborhood. Rather, your, your support for the efforts of the school is paramount. I encourage you to grasp the opportunities that this program offers and to model the behaviors we would wish to see reflected in our children. In so doing, you improve yourselves, you improve your community, and by extension, your country. Students, I'm going to talk with you again. This program cannot have its desired impact unless you play your part. 15 students from three rural primary schools were the recipients of tablets donated by the Youth Development Program. Speaking at a press briefing to hand over the devices, Minister of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment Charles Griffith said the donation to the St. Joseph, St. Bernard's and St. Elizabeth Primary Schools formed part of the community outreach projects being undertaken by his ministry. One of several projects coming from the Youth Development Program, which is a segment of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. Now, a little known secret is the fact that our youth commissioners are tasked every single year of producing at least two community projects. This one was started by the Youth Commissioner for St. Joseph, Mr. Henry Austin. Um, I'm told it commenced in December, culminating today with the presentation of these tablets. Now, a lot of our programming at the ministry, well, all of our programming at the ministry is centered around facilitating the needs and aspirations of young people. And the school setting is no different because this is part of the remit of the youth commissioners to work in tandem with the primary school with structured organizations at community level to ensure that we can assist wherever possible in ensuring that our young people have a smooth path, path to whatever it is that they aspire to do. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional happenings in Jamaica, the announcement of the new $2,000 back note is not sitting well with some quarters. Questions are being raised about the purpose and relevance of the new note and what it says about the economy. More on this report from CVM Television. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, during his budget debate Tuesday, tabled a motion for a new $2,000 note to be introduced in addition to a redesign of all the current notes. This marks the first time in 13 years that a new banknote is being put forward and has subsequently triggered questions raised at the time of the introduction of the $5,000 bill. What does this say about Jamaica's economy? About the economy. The $5,000 note is the largest note and it continues to be the largest note out there. I think that if it were the case that we're introducing a $10,000 bill, then that would send a greater signal that the value of our currency, which is a representation of the strength of our economy, is getting weaker. But I think that the $2,000 bill doesn't send so much of a signal so strong. Economist Dr. Andre Houghton says it merely provides the country with more leverage between the $1,000 and the $5,000 notes. 
On the international front, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine could see international food and feed prices rise by up to 20%, triggering a jump in global malnourishment, a report by the Food and Agricultural Organization finds. The FAO said that it was not clear whether Ukraine would be able to harvest crops if the war, which Moscow terms a special operation, dragged on. Russia and Ukraine together provide 19 per cent of the world's barley supply, 14 per cent of wheat and 4 per cent of maize, making up more than one third of global cereal exports. Russia is also a world leader in fertilizer exports. The FAO's food price index hit a record high in February and looks certain to climb further still in the months ahead. It said only part of the expected shortfall in exports from Russia and Ukraine could be met by other countries. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.